Okay, welcome to this lesson on what is the side splitter theorem. Alright, so basically we have your objectives here, the do now. Okay, it's gonna be your quiz. And let's start with the mini lesson. Now, listen to what it says, okay? Because it's a bunch of difficult words. The wording is difficult. It says the side splitter theorem, okay, state that if states that if a line is parallel to a side of a triangle and intersects the other two sides then this line divides those two sides proportionally in other words and this is just one of the uh, strategies one of the variations okay because there's another one that I have to talk to you about uh, later in this lesson so if this line is parallel to this other line you see that's how you uh, denote parallelism so this line is parallel to this one and this line intersects, or this segment intersects the other two sides, okay, not this one, but this side and this side, right? Then it divides, it divides, okay, the two sides proportionally. So this over this and this over this. And this is basically what, what you have it. This is how you have it. So AC is to CE as well as AB is to BD. All right, so let, let us actually work one problem out, see how see how it goes. All right, so VW is 7. So VW is 7, okay. Wow, my 7 is really ugly. It doesn't matter. I'm the teacher. YW is 14. Y, YW is 14, okay. Then VX is, I have no idea, so I'm just going to put X over here. And then XZ is 16 x z is 16 so if i just refer back to the way they have it here okay the state the side splitter theorem then i will say i will say that vw which is 7 is to the other part of the side wy which is 14 that equals because that's what follows look you see the equal sign okay equals vx which is x over xz which is 16 then this is a proportion so we just cross multiply all right so we have to figure out is what is 16 times 7 which is 112 so this is okay just gonna separate this so i'm gonna put uh a column okay so 112 equals 14 times x is 14x all right and then divide by 14 so x equals what is 112 divided by 14 8 so x equals 8 all right now i could have i could have done it using my common sense Look at this. 7 is half of 14. So all I have to do is 16. So this must be half of 16. So this could have been 8. I mean, is 8. See? All right. So that's using your common sense and use it, uh, utilizing the size splitter theorem. Okay? One of the ways of using it. Right away, I'm going to show you my preferred method. And this is my preferred method. If this line right here is parallel to this one it will divide this into two triangles okay a small triangle and a large triangle so let us do this i'm gonna do the small triangle so this is the small triangle okay and this is the large triangle let's label the small triangle w v x w b X. And now let's label the large triangle Y, B, Z. Y, B, Z. And now let us label the length of the side. So VW is 7. Okay, cool. Then VX, I don't know what it is. So it's X. All right. And finally, YZ, they're not giving it to me, so I don't have to do anything. Now, on the large triangle, VY, what is VY? VY is 21, because this is 7 and this is 14, that's 21. 
So BY, BY, sorry, is 21. Gosh, I cannot see that 21. Okay, 21. And VZ is nothing more than the sum of these two sides. So VZ will be X plus 16. Yo, bags, that's too complicated. No, it's not complicated. It's just about following protocol instructions. And I know it's going to be a lot more work, but it's the most precise method. So watch this. I am going to form a proportion. I am going to form a proportion using the, the same method, utilizing the measures and corresponding sides. So VW, this side corresponds to this side right here. So I'm going to say 7 is to 21. See that? Then equals, and now I'm going to compare the other two corresponding sides. So this VX corresponds to this VZ. So I'm going to say that VX, which is X, corresponds to, okay, is to X plus 16. So now you have your proportion. So guess what I'm going to do with a proportion? I am going to cross multiply. So when I cross multiply, I'm going to get 21X in here. Equaling, and of course you got to multiply 7 times this. So 7 times X is 7X. And then 7 times 16 is 112. So plus 112. Now, I don't have enough space. Actually, I do. So I'm going to separate this right here. And I'm going to show you. I'm going to solve for X. So I am going to basically here, I got variables on both sides. So I'm going to subtract 7X from both sides. So if I subtract 7X here, it disappears. And when I subtract 7x here, I end up with 14x. So I end up with 14x equaling 112. Now guess what? I don't need to do anything else, but you know what? Let me just divide by 14. Guess what? This part right here is the same as this part right here. Okay. So then x is 8. So therefore, vx is 8. All right. So these are the three ways of doing it. One is comparing uh, each part of the sides, okay? The other one is using your common sense. And the other one is actually separating this into two triangles, similar triangles, which is my preferred method. And I'm going to show you why is my preferred method. All right. Now, a, color, a, a, a corollary to a theorem is nothing more than like an extension, okay? An extension to that theorem. So it says that, when three parallel lines intersect two transversals, so when three parallel lines intersect two transversals, the segments intercepted, papa, 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 okay, are proportional. Ah, okay, don't worry, we'll get to see this later. And now, my friends, your checking for understanding, slash independent practice, slash activity, slash homework. So, in the diagram below of triangle ACT, BE is parallel to AT. They have to say that they're parallel, otherwise we cannot use the side splitter theorem. So this is parallel to this one. Okay, CB is 3. So CB is 3. Uh, what else do I know? CA is 10. CA is 10. Okay, CE is 6. What is the length of ET? They want to know this one. Okay. So guess what? I am going to use the regular one. I'm going to show you when is it that you need to really separate the triangles. So if this CA is 10 and this is already 3, that makes this what? 7. Okay, because the whole thing is 10. All right. So let me form my proportion. So 3 is to 7. Notice that I'm not separating the triangles. And 6 is to X. Cross multiply and you get, okay, I'm going to put a column to, determine, to denote that I'm doing something else. So you get 3x equal 42. You divide by 3 and you get x equal 14. So et is 
14. As simple as that. All right. Let's do the next one. See if I let you do it on your own or you might need some guidance. All right. So the triangle. So let's see now. And they're telling you that one side is parallel to the other. AT is 5. Let me sharpen my pencil. Nice. Okay. AT is 5. TB is 7. Where the hell is TB? Oh, TB is 7. Okay. Uh, and AV is 10. They want to know what VC is. How do I know? Automatically. Okay, then you know what? You don't need my help. You could just do it the same way you did it. You did the problem before. So you get one minute to do it. Hurry up. I'm going to pause this. And when I unpause it, I expect uh, you to have the answer. Okay, so let's see. If you did it the following way. 5, plus, uh, five over 7, right? And 10 over X. Okay, I went from top to bottom, top to bottom. I cannot just go 5 to 7 and then X to 10. You can't do that. All right, cross multiply so you get 5X equal 70. And then divide by 5 and you get X equal 12. Nope, not 12. Sorry, 14. 70 divided by 5 is 14. Baka, you know your math. No, it's just that um where is it 70 divided by 5 i know that 5 times 10 is 50 and 5 times 4 is 20 50 plus 20 is 70 so 10 plus 4 is 14 okay let's move on let's see what's up here uh let's label it please so we know that this is parallel to that one that's exactly the topic that we're looking at so i really don't need to go through everything. Now let me label it. AC is X minus 3. Okay. BE is 20. AB is 16. AD, the whole thing right here, is 2X plus 2. All right. They want me to find the length of AC, this length right here. All right. Let me tell you something. We're doing the proportion, so I need this and this. I also need this and I need this. So how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to show you two ways of doing it. If this segment AC plus CD makes AD, the sum of these two will give me 2X plus 2. So how do I get this? One point if you tell me. Five seconds. Okay, time is up. Yes, if this is, let's say, let's give numerical values. If this is six and this is four, that's 10. So the whole thing here was 10. So six and four. But what if I only have six and I got the 10? How do I get this four? 10 minus six is four. Oh, okay. So then what I'm gonna do is two X plus two minus X minus three. Okay, so two X, Minus X is 1X. Okay. Now, 2 minus negative 3. You see, 2 minus negative 3 is 5. Positive. So, that means that this plus this is 2X plus 2. And let's check. X plus X is 2X. Okay. Negative 3 plus 5 is 2. Oh, okay. So, we got it. Now, I got the two sides. So, now I could do my proportion. So, 16 over 20. Okay, equaling x minus 3 over x plus 5. All right, uh, guys, just uh, one quick advice. You Don't tell me, oh, Becker, I cannot see from far. You don't have to. You have this paper in front of you. Just refer to your paper in case you cannot read something. All right, let's cross multiply. So... When I cross multiply, I get the following. 16 times this, well, 16 times x is 16x. And 16 times 5 is 80. Okay? And now, let us do this. 20 times x is 20x. 
20 times negative 3 is negative 60, so that's minus 60. Wait, the X. Ah, oh, the X. Control se te olvidó la X. Minus 60. Okay, there you go. So, <clears throat> now let's solve the equation. So, I'm going to, uh, what am I going to do? Well, I got variables on both sides, so I'm just going to subtract 16x from both sides. Why? Because if I could subtract 20x, but I'm going to end up with a negative value. So I'm just going to subtract the 16x. So when I subtract 16x over here, I get 0, so that left leaves you with the 80. When I subtract 16x over here, I get 4x. Okay. And now this negative 60, I'm going to add 60 to both sides. So when I add 60 here, I get 140, equaling to 4x. Okay, and now I'm just going to divide by, exactly, so you get 35, x equal 35. Question is, find the length of AC, so 40, 35 is not the length of AC, the length of AC is 35 minus 3, in other words, 32. So you put length of AC equals 32. And that's how you do it. All right, then. I'm going to show you a different method of doing this. Actually, not a different. I already showed you this method. So I'm just going to put this paper over here. I'm going to separate these two triangles, okay? So I have... The big triangle right here. Oh, I'll do it and I'll show it to you. Okay, so this is what I have, the triangles. So I'm gonna label the little triangle. The little triangle is B, A, C. The large triangle is E, A, D. The measures that I got originally, okay, were the following. This is 16, this is, sorry, this is not, oh yeah, A, B is 16. Uh, what else, A, C is X, minus 3 okay now for the big triangle AE is what I give you one point if you tell me what AE is in five seconds okay time is up so the length is I'm sorry this length is 36 how do I know hello 16 and 20 that's 36 the whole length now AD I know is 2x Plus two. All right, so far so good. You have to use your common sense because there's so many ways in which you could solve a problem. So you cannot you, you you cannot be stuck in one method. All right then. So let me go and use this paper. They want to know what the length of AC is. Sure, I will form a proportion. Remember, I separated the two triangles. So all I have to do is compare corresponding sides. So this side here is 16. Okay, I think I can make it a little larger now. Like this. So this side is 16, so I'm going to say 16 over, and this is the corresponding side, you see, on the same position. So AE is 36. Okay, now, equals, and now I'm going to compare this other side. AC is X minus 3. Compared to the corresponding side, which is 2X plus 2. Okay, now let's cross multiply. So yes, I know this is a little longer, but it's always effective if you know how to do your math. So let us multiply. So this first, 16 times 2x is nothing more than 32x. Plus 16 times 2 is 32, so we got this. Equaling, and now 36 times x, 36x. 36 times 3 is 108, but is what? Negative, so minus 108. Now let me just solve this equation. So I have variables on both sides, so I'm going to get rid of the smaller one, so I end up with a positive value. Okay? So let's see now. Or I could add 108 right away if I wanted to. So let me get rid of the of the letters first. Okay, so I'm gonna subtract 32x and 36x minus 32x is 4x. Okay. 
and now I am going to add 108 so uh, 108 plus 32 well 2 that's 110 140 I think yes so I end up with 140 equal to 4x and the rest is history you know why because it's already here 140 equals 4x you divide by 4 and you get this answer and then you know that this is not the answer that the answer is actually 32 because the value is x minus 3 all right good so you notice that both methods work okay well, both methods work here you have to figure out what the length of this was in order for you to compare size like that if you separate the triangles you don't have to figure out what the length is funny thing is that you will have to separate your triangles at some point and I'm gonna explain to you when alright so in this problem in the diagram below so you got the triangle okay this is parallel to this one right so let's label it AE is 3 okay ED is 6 okay DC is 15 and find the length of uh, EB they want you to find this length right here so I'm gonna call it X okay so I'm gonna do it please do not write I will give you enough uh, time to write it down I'm just gonna try something so I'm gonna try the method that I've been doing uh, like the size what the side splitter theorem says so three